All right, in homework 13.2, we are solving rational equations. Um, I'll do a few of these to make sure we know what's up. Um, let's look at this first one. Uh, the idea, the fastest way to solve rational equations, is to multiply by the least common denominator. Um, we want to cancel out all the denominators by multiplying. So, um, for instance, one thing we could do here is we could multiply by x. We could multiply both sides of the equations by x. We could also multiply by x squared, and we could also multiply by 3x squared. Um, if we did that, that would cancel out all the denominators, but it's a very inefficient way, and it's completely unnecessary. The least common denominator is actually just 3x squared. The reason is, is because 3x squared, when you multiply by 3x squared and divide by 3x squared, that will cancel out um, and give you x plus 3. We're going to multiply times each of these. When we multiply 3x squared times 1 over x, 3x squared times 1 over x. 3x squared can be rewritten as 3 times x times x. And so one of the x's we're multiplying by will cancel out with one of the x's we're dividing by. And what's left over is 3x. Similarly here, we're multiplying by 3x squared and dividing by x squared. Multiplying by x squared and dividing by x squared cancels out. And what's left over is negative 1 times 3, which is negative 3. From here, we have a linear equation, and we can solve by getting the x's on the same side and the uh, y's on the, on the constants on the other side and getting x's 3. Um, notice that this is substantially easier than if you'd ended up with a, like a quartic equation and had to do long division twice because you multiplied by too much stuff. Um, let's look at how that works on some ones where we might need to factor. Uh, let's do number 10. Number 10 looks good to me. Number 10. We want to multiply, and what we don't want to do is multiply by n and n squared plus 4n, because if we did that, we'd get 1 times n times n squared plus 4n, and we'd end up with this cubic. And solving a cubic equation is way harder than solving lower level equations, so we want to be more smart than that. What we're going to do is we're going to factor this denominator. And what we'll notice is that when we multiply by n times n plus 4, that'll already cancel out the dividing by n. And so this is the least common denominator that we need to multiply by. Um, it's going to distribute and multiply times both sides of the equation and each term. So when we multiply times the left side of the equation, we get 1 times n times n plus 4, um, which I'll multiply out in a second. The second one, the dividing by n, cancels out with the multiplying by n. And so we get n minus 5 times n plus 4. And in this last one, the multiplying by n times n plus 4 cancels out with the dividing by n times n plus 4, which is n squared plus 4n. So we just end up with a 1. When you have three things multiplying together, you multiply two of them together first. It doesn't matter the order you do it in. So I'm going to multiply 1 times n, which is n and then multiply that times n plus 4, which distributes. So n squared plus 4n. Here, we have a binomial times a binomial. n squared plus 4n minus 5n minus 20. The 1 is still there. This is a quadratic, so we need to make it equal to 0. Now, I can save myself a little bit of time by noticing that uh, when I subtract n squared on both sides, the n squareds will cancel. And so it actually is not a quadratic. It'll end up being a linear. Um, and so I need to get all the variables on one side and the constants on the other. So I, I think the way I would do that is subtract 4n, add 5n, and end up with 5n equals negative 19 by combining these two terms. Um, so n is negative 19 fifths. Let's look at some on the back. Uh, some of these come out to be quadratic, and you have to do some quadratic equation stuff, which is fine. On the back. Um, hopefully, I mean, I hope you've tried this on your own. Um, if you haven't tried this on your own, you should stop this video now. You know, try to make sure you understand these questions, because I'm going to make sure we understand these questions in case, in case people get stuck on them. But if you haven't tried them on, on your own, pause the video and try it on your own. For what values of x will f of x equal negative 3? So here's f of x. We want it to equal negative 3. And so this is just 
an easy solving rational equations. We would multiply by x plus 3, multiply by x plus 3, and it would be a linear equation. Let's look at this next one. This next one is much harder. For what value of k, so our answer should be k equals something. For what value of k will the average rate of change of f of x on the interval from 1 to k be 2 ninths? So we need the average rate of change to be 2 ninths. We need a formula for the average rate of change. Here's the to be 2 ninths is equals 2 ninths. The average rate of change is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Or a more useful way of writing that is f, um, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And we want it on the interval from 1 to k. So our second x value, our second x value is going to be k. Our original x value is 1, so k minus 1. And so these are our x, that's how much the x is changed by, k minus 1. So if k is 5, the x is changed by 4, right? The x increased by 4. Um, um, and the y values, well, the y value, our second y value is... Um, whatever we get when we plug in k into f of x, which is just 5k plus 7 over k plus 3. And our original y value is what we get when we plug in 1 um, into the function. So f of 1. f of 1 is, so f of 1 is 5 times 1 divided by 1 plus 3. So that's 12 divided by 4, which is 3. So this is our average rate of change, and it's equal to 2 ninths. So the average rate of change on the interval from 1 to k needs to be 2 ninths. Um, this is a uh, problem we know how to solve from our most recent class. If, it's if the whole thing is dividing by k minus 1, we need to multiply both sides by k minus 1. Uh, that will cancel out the, the dividing by k minus 1. So... Here, um, from your homework a couple nights ago, when you multiply a fraction times a whole number, the easiest way to do it is to change the whole number to something dividing by 1. That way, when you multiply straight across, you get um, 2 times k minus 1 divided by 9. This is a lot simpler than doing distributing the 2 ninths, which is possible. You could get 2 ninths k minus 2 ninths, but then you've got a bunch of fractions. Whereas if we do it like this, we'll be able to... Um, get rid of a bunch of the fractions by multiplying by a common denominator. So our common denominator we're going to multiply by here is, well, this one's dividing by 9, this one's dividing by k plus 3. So we need to multiply by 9 on both sides to cancel out dividing by 9. We also need to multiply by k plus 3 to, mul to cancel out the multiplying by k plus 3. So here, uh, well, this is distributing. So when it multiplies times this first one, Multiplying by k plus 3 and dividing by k plus 3 cancel out, so it's 9 times 5k plus 7. 9 times k plus 3 times negative 3, nothing cancels out here. There's no dividing, so it's going to be negative 3 times 9 times k plus 3. And on this side, the dividing by 9 cancels out, and so we get 2 times k minus 1 times k plus 3. Okay. Uh, the only thing tricky is that when you multiply three things together, this is times, 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 the three does not distribute. There's no property that says that. If you, if you multiply two times three times four, the two does not distribute. You just pick two of them, multiply them together, and then multiply the final pair together. And it doesn't matter what order you multiply it in. You could also multiply three times four together first, then multiply by two. Whichever way is easier, it's fine. Um, and so, for instance, in this first one, It's easier to multiply 3 times 9 first, and that'll distribute. On this one, it's easier to multiply the k plus 1 times the k minus 3 first because uh, we'll do one binomial times a binomial instead of having to do a harder binomial times a binomial. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out. The 2 is just going to chill there. k squared plus 3k, distribute, and simplify. Here, the 27 distributes. 
Um, you know, I could multiply all these out or I could combine these like terms first. I'm going to go ahead and do that just right here and then multiply the 2 times everything. So 2k squared minus uh, plus 4k minus 6. This is a quadratic, so I'm going to make everything equal to 0 by moving all of this over to the other side. So we've got minus 45k plus 27k. So we've got 2k squared, um, let's see, plus 14k, sorry, minus 14k. And then when we move the plus 61 and the minus 81, so it's going to be plus 81 minus 63. Um, 75 minus 63 is minus 12. Um, this can be factored. They have a common factor of 2. So k equals 6 or 1. Now, we do need to check our answer when we solve a, um, a rational equation to make sure that we didn't have any extraneous solutions. Um, k is 6 or 1. Well, when we plug in 6, it doesn't make anything equal to 0. But when we plug in 1, it makes you divide by 0. So the answer is k is 6. Man, that was a lot of work. For what x value will f of x be 6 more units than g of x? So for what x, so we're going to solve, get x equals, we're going to be solving an equation, will f of x be 6 more than g of x? So we want f of x to be g of x plus 6. And this is just setting up an equation. So 5x plus 7 divided by x plus 3 needs to be 2x plus 7 divided by x minus 4 plus 6. And I'll let you solve it from there. Let h of x equal f of x plus g of x. So the first thing is h of x, we need to figure out what's going on here. We need to combine these into a single um, quotient. Um, so we need to get a common denominator. And I'll let you guys do it from here. I feel like you can do that. Um, consider that you need to get the same denominators. So I'll multiply this one by x plus 3, this one by x minus 4. And I'm sure it will come out well for you. Good luck on the rest of your homework.